Chapter 1 Sometimes we go on a search for something and do not know what we are looking for until we come again to our beginning. Robert Lax I was rummaging around for a pen in my mother's apartment when I found a grainy black and white photo stuck to the back of a drawer in her desk. It was taken of me as a toddler at the beach near our home in Greenwich, Connecticut. Stamped on the white, decoratively scalloped border is the year 1962. That year, riots broke out when African-American student Philip Meredith tried to enroll at the University of Mississippi. Two members of the High Wire Circus Act, the Flying Walendas, were killed when their seven-person pyramid collapsed during a performance in Detroit, and the United States and the Soviet Union came within a cat's whisker of incinerating each other when our military discovered that the Soviets had placed nuclear missiles 90 miles off the coast of Florida in Cuba. It was also the year in which an unsuspecting black bear named Yogi was volunteered by the Air Force to participate in an escape capsule test. He was ejected from a supersonic aircraft flying at 870 miles per hour at an altitude of 35,000 feet, landing safely on the earth seven minutes and 49 seconds later. It was a stressful year for everybody. The photo of me at the beach suggests that young children are more conscious of what's happening in their environment than developmental psychologists once believed. I knew that civilization was teetering on the precipice of annihilation, and I was ready. I am sitting in a lifeboat. The picture was taken with my mother's camera, a Kodak Brownie Hawkeye a perfect cube of black plastic with a gray knob on the side that you wound to advance the film. To take a picture, you had to hunch over the camera, looking at your subject through a small square viewfinder. The owner's manual claimed the lens could take sharp pictures from five feet to infinity. That's a whole lot of camera for $5.50. Later, when my mother bought a new camera, the brownie ended up in my toy chest. The knob made an awful grinding noise when I turned it because of the grit and sand lodged in the gears of the film spool. For a year, it went with me everywhere. My mother told me that if I removed the back of the camera and shook it hard enough, the countless memories hiding inside might tumble out. I gave it all I had, but not even one fell out. I would pay much more than $5.50 to hold that brownie in my hands again today. So here I am in the photo, a toe-headed two-year-old sitting in what I remember was a salmon-orange-stained lifeboat, waving and laughing at the photographer whose identity is a mystery to me even now. Behind me, classic wood motorboats with elegant lines bob in the waves. I imagine men sauntering by off-camera in Ray-Bans and wearing short, skin-tight bathing suits only a Canadian could love. When I first discovered the picture in my mother's desk, I was overwhelmed by the feeling that the boy in the boat was not waving and laughing at the person snapping the photo as much as he was frantically trying to get the attention of the man I am today. He was beckoning me to get into the boat.